Tonight we're continuing in the fourth chapter of Ephesians. This will be our 54th lesson in this review of this book. <clears throat> As you must know, if you don't know, you should know, <laughs> that salvation is not a once-for-all-time experience even though it does have a dis distinct beginning. Mm -hmm. Salvation is a process. It commences with the conviction of sin, righteousness, and judgment to come, and is brought to culmination when we are in, in our in immortal bodies stand with the Lord forever. So that so it's quite a long process. It began by experientially by us fleeing to Christ for refuge. And it, it continues to the time when grace will be brought to us at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. And there is a salvation that's ready to be revealed. So this is important to remember this is a process. A lot of people don't know this. They've not been taught this. They're not students of Scripture, so they go, they can't stumble across it because they're not Bible students. I wanted to take a moment to comment about that. <clears throat> I have not in my lifetime, and I've spent a lot of time with devoted people. These have been always these have always been my friends of preference, my close friends. But I've not known a lot of people that are serious students of Scripture. Their minds are too divided. They got too many other things going on in their life. And uh, so consequently, a lot of things they could know, they don't know because they're not, they're not addicted to the reading of Scripture. And I noticed this as a, when I was rather young, I noticed this. This was, I know that to be a student of Scripture, there's a lot of things you have to forfeit. Yeah. <laughs> that other people, it's not that they're like wrong, it's, it's just that they, they deplete your mind and your affection and your resources. And so when you finally, people finally do read the scripture, they're, they're like dull and they can't comprehend things. And this is how some people live. They live like this. But this is not the way to live. If it is true that we live by every word of God, if that's a true statement, Moses said it, Jesus said it, that man lives by every word of God, you had best be an expert in the Word of God. Maybe you don't know what a lot of things mean, but you should not be ignorant of anything they say. Yeah. Now having said that, <coughs> let me return to this matter of salvation being a process. <coughs> it's depicted in the creation, this idea of a process. It's depicted in the creation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So I gather that was like an instant. These realms were instantly called into being. But now it took six days to populate them. And to make proper divisions. It took six days to do it. I was telling you that the new creation, being born again and so forth, is not the end of the matter. Like the heavens had to be populated with billions of heavenly bodies and stars. See, that followed the creation of the heaven and the earth so far as that those realms being made. The earth was filled with all forms of life from vegetation to fowls of the air, to fish of the sea, to beasts of the earth, and finally to humanity itself. So a newness of life has to be populated. Amen. There has to be something more than just a 
a reality of life. <laughs> it has to be more than that. And this is the thing that Paul is bringing out in the text. You're not done with involvement when you call on the name of the Lord. This isn't the end of the matter. This extends over an appointed period of time, the work of salvation, <clears throat> whether you're speaking about the individual or the entirety of it. From the individual point of view, God is perfecting the people so they can, in fact, be with him forever without any kind of variance between God and man. Because no one who's at variance with God is going to heaven. I, just settle that once and for all in your mind. If there's ever been any doubt about that in your mind, nobody who is at variance with God is going to heaven. It's just that simple. See, that's what salvation is all about, is removing that variance with God. So people who find themselves frequently disagreeing with God or confused about Scripture or things like this, that thing's got to be resolved. That's got to be worked out. And that's what salvation is. And Paul's telling us how to, how to do this in, the, in this text. Not a list of rules how to do it, but things that have to be done. They're like broad things that have to be done. <clears throat> like you say to Tim, well, keep clean. Well, see, that's not, <laughs> that's not something you just do in a moment of time. It's just something that takes, expands a period of time. So we're talking about that sort of thing, and our text is verses 22 and 23 of the fourth chapter. Now remember what the preceding verses told us. We've been taught the truth as it is by Jesus, and here's what Jesus teaches people. Here's what Jesus teaches people. And whoever doesn't do this hasn't been taught by Jesus. And whoever hasn't been taught by Jesus is as lost as a person can be. Taught by him as the truth is in Jesus that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to deceitful lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That, that's not like a, just a commandment. That's what Jesus teaches. Yes. You've you seen that, I'm sure. <coughs> just look at these words, that, that ye. Yeah, that personalized. He doesn't say like, this is something that has got to happen. See, that's not, that ye, see. <laughs> this isn't something everybody ought to do, that ye. Yeah. See, it's personal. Some other versions read, you were taught. I want to show you how some of the versions represent this, which I think is not right. That you were taught. NIV says that. Then it says, then. That is, in view of what Jesus is doing, here's, here's what you should do. Or namely, that is precisely what Jesus teaches. You were to, net that's looking at it from the past, which I don't think it is. So then, this is a conclusion. The way if you heard what Jesus had to say, this is this is what you do. You were told, since then we do not have an excuse for ignorance, the message Bible says. So you'll notice quite a few of these, though they don't really accent. Christ, you notice quite a few of them. Which means whoever whoever's version this is, they didn't see that. Mm -hmm. yeah. They didn't see it. He's talking about what Jesus teaches people to do. Yeah. Amen. The teaching of reference is related to God, right, God writing his law on the heart. See, that's in effect, this is what this is. This is just from a new covenant point of view. Yeah. God says, I will write my laws in their hearts that's what this is talking about here. This is something you can't do if you don't want to do it. <laughs> you, there are some things you can do if, even if you don't want to do it. You can do it. Sometimes your job requires certain things of you. You don't want to do it, but you do it anyway. This is not that sort of thing. 
You can't do this if you don't want to do it, and you won't want to do it if Jesus doesn't teach you. See, it's helped greatly when a person to assess, judge themselves. If, they've, if they're dragging their feet, so to speak, not active in the things we're going to talk about, they've got to really think this out, why this is this way. Best to do it on this side of the Day of Judgment. This is what Jesus does when he dwells in the heart by faith. You remember there in Ephesians 3.17, 3, it says he dwells in our heart by faith. He strengthens might by his spirit in the inner man, so Christ can dwell in your heart by faith. And this is what he does when he dwells in your heart by faith. Shall I say this is one of the things he does when he dwells in your heart by faith. He teaches you this. If you have been taught by him, as the 20 verse, 21st verse says, so what does he teach you? He teaches you to put off something. <laughs> Other versions say, lay it aside. So this is something you got. No matter how far along you are, this is something you got. Put it off. Lay it aside. Put it away. Do it. New Jerusalem Bible says, strip it off. It's it, it, some, some aggressive mm -hmm. action. Strip it off. Put it inside. Throw it off. Living Bible says, give it up. Contemporary English version says, leave it. English Revised version says, get rid of it. Good News Bible says, <laughs> take it off and strip yourselves of it. The Amplified Bible says this. This is the grace of aggressive action. Now, you, he doesn't say if you can. Or if you have a mind to do it. Or if you've got time to do it. Or if you can see this. This has got to be done. Put it off. So it's something that requires aggressive action. And this is in view of the fact that in salvation we've been delivered yeah. you still got to do this yeah. Amen. in salvation you've been saved second mm -hmm. timothy 1 9 but if you you still got to do this yeah. you've been born again first peter 1 23 still got to do this put this off you've been raised up and made to sit together with christ in heavenly places but this has still got to be done i don't uh I know a lot of people have not seen this, but this is what we labor. I, I'm consumed with this desire because I am thoroughly unimpressed mm -hmm. with the Christian world at large, and a lot of it in particular. Yeah. It's pathetic. The condition of people that call themselves Christians is pathetic. They just don't know what's going on. They don't know what it's all about, which means Jesus hasn't been teaching them, which means something's wrong. There's a bottleneck somewhere. Jesus doesn't stop teaching, and the Spirit doesn't stop working unless there's a bottleneck someplace. So instead of dealing with the bottleneck, he just deals, comes right straight, cuts to the quick, put off, the old man. See, some people think when they're born again, when they come into the Lord, they're saved, hallelujah, and that's kind of the end of the matter. No, that's the beginning of the matter. Yes. Not the end of the matter. <clears throat> now, what do you put off? I'm very particular about this. The former conversation. Yeah. That's right. Or the former manner of life. Now, we talked about this word conversation frequently. Just like your mouth can hold a conversation, your life is a conversation. That's right. And it's delivering some kind of message. Mm -hmm. The way you live is delivering some, some kind of message. Now there's a former yeah. conversation. Former conduct, the New King James Bible says. Former manner of life. New American Standard Bible says, former way of life, 
NIV Bible says, earlier way of life or former practices or old way of life or former behavior, former mode of life. There's a certain way we used to live. Put it off. That's the word now. That's the word being delivered here. Now he has told us, sir, in Ephesians thus far, he has told us some things that characterize this former conversation. See, normally people think of it as being a drunkard or being a harlot or being you know, a whoremonger or being a fornicator. or you know, They think of it like that. Well, that is, some people's lives are, have been that way, but not everybody's lives has been that way. In fact, I, it used to be, at any rate, the minority of people were that way. Even the minority of non-Christian people, they, they were in that, weren't in those categories. We've managed to kind of change the percentage in the past few years. Now, here's how this was, kind of life was characterized in Scripture as living in the vanity of the mind, 4.15. So their life was driven by a, a way of thinking that was not productive. Vanity of the mind. They were thinking about things that were coming to an end. Vanity of the mind. Having the understanding dark, and they were living without having the kind of understanding you have in Christ, spiritual understanding. They were living without that kind of understanding. Now, if you think Satan has stopped trying to get you to live without understanding, think again. Some people have had major things they haven't understood for years. And they've learned to live. Things have been, we're talking about things that have been revealed. And they've, they've learned to live with it. They're confused and they say, we've got to love one another, be tolerant of one another, and blah de blah de blah And the outward outcome of it all is they're living without understanding, yeah. which is a former way of life. Yeah. Yeah. That is not the way life in Christ is lived. It is not the way life in Christ is lived without understanding. It is not. The only thing that's legitimately not understood is what hasn't been revealed. Yes. If it's been revealed, you've got to understand it. Amen. That's why it was revealed. Yes. Our lives were characterized by the understanding was darkened. How's that? God wouldn't let us yes. see these beautiful things that are in Christ Jesus. It was uh, called blindness of heart. So in the affection part, the thing that really drives you to do what you do, the, the central nervous system of the spiritual person, it was blind. It couldn't see. That's a former life. And we were alienated from the life of God. Got close to God, we sensed the hostility. We didn't feel comfortable. Even people mention God. There's some people uncomfortable if it's even mentioned. Alienated from the life of God, right? This is the former life. In other words, our lives were basically self-centered. That's why all of these, we were hostile to the truths of God. Is because we were basically living for ourselves. That was it. And some people might be considerate of other people a little bit, but basically for themselves, self Self-centered lives. Now we got to put that off. What does that mean? It means that Satan will try and intrude that self-centeredism again and again. Yeah, that's right. You were delivered from it once in Christ. You were delivered from it. But see, you got a fresh start, so to speak. But Satan tried. You'd be surprised of the people that forfeit the deep things of God for personal earthly preferences. Now they can give you justification for it. I understand this and I'm not their judge, but God is. And God will not tolerate this. If what you do interferes with your growth in Christ, you've got to stop doing it. Now, this is, this is something you, you have to determine this, but this has to be determined. This is part of put off the former conversation. 
Some people lived to qualify for a job. This was their whole life, what they did from little up. Other people lived their whole life to be well known or to be received or to be happy and have satisfaction. And there's a variety of things that are, if, that are focused on in this, but it's a former way of life and it's to be, it's to be put off. Satan's intention is to get us to live for self, mm -hmm. ignoring God, yeah. and the rest hap just happens. Yeah. Yes? <coughs> Remember that this way of life is the way of flesh, so it makes no difference whether you come to the Lord <coughs> early or late. Everything that was before Christ right. is the former, former. Mm -hmm. conversation. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. And there's a the fact that you are the one that lived it means that there's a tendency for this to cling to you. Yeah. You got to put it off. It tries to tries to get on you again, see, yeah. so to speak. <clears throat> now that's the life to be cut off. Former conversation: the self-centered, living for self, not for God, unaware of God, not understanding God, alienated from God. That's got to go. Mm -hmm. Put it off. Then he, he, he personalizes, he, he identifies what it was. There, it was a, a former conversation, it's a way or manner of life, but now he, he nails it down, the old man. He nails it down. Now in Christ, when you come into Christ, the old man is crucified. That's Romans 6.6. 6. That's how you come in. He's not killed, he's crucified. His so life isn't taken, he's crucified. That the body of sin might be destroyed. That the body of sin is a totality of its expression. It might be destroyed. That people would stop sinning, in other words. But for that to happen, the old man must be crucified. And the intent, see, crucifixion was not a mode of discipline. You didn't crucify somebody for a couple of days to teach them a lesson. Yeah. The purpose of crucifixion was death. Yeah, right. The sentence of death was pronounced. Right. Crucifixion was the means, all right? God has pronounced the sentence of death upon the flesh Amen. and upon living for self. Yeah. Amen. He's pronounced the sentence of death. There's no way it can be revised or renewed or refreshed or revitalized. It's got to die. And the only way God will let it die is on the cross. Yes, it's got to be crucified. And you've got to keep that nature on the cross. That's how you put it off. Keep it on the cross. <laughs> now you've got to do this while you're running the race with patience that's set before you. You've got to do this while... You're looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. You've got to do this while you're working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. See, this is part and parcel of life in Christ. This is, this is put, what you do. <coughs> A thoughtless life will move one to default to the flesh. See, even after you're born again, the default is flesh. As long as you're in the body... By default, flesh. Otherwise, these warnings don't make sense. See, Someone says, well, by default, you go to the Spirit. No, this is not so. You've got to battle to get to the Spirit. You've got to do certain things to, to, be, to yield to the Spirit. You've got to subdue other things. So by default, if you quit thinking about God, the default is former way of conversation. The flesh. Salvation out on the earth is an evidence of why that happens. That's because right. Everything about you provokes your flesh. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. You're in a hostile realm, see. Mm -hmm. Now, this is something people have a lot of difficulty perceiving. Professing Christian people. See, anyone who says that once you're saved, you're always saved, they don't see this. This is what they don't see. 
Well, they can cite scriptures and tie them together and all this, but after all said and done, they don't see this. And here's the catch. There's no excuse for not seeing this because Jesus teaches this. Now, I'm going to wax bold here. And I think I'm fully capable of supporting what I'm about to say. A person who insists on embracing that kind of teaching has not effectively been taught by Christ. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. And if they've not effectively been tossed by, taught by Christ, to put it very mildly, they're not what they think they are. Yeah. Yeah. They're deficient. Seriously deficient. And that is something that has to be said. If, if that doctrine was true, why would you say put off the old man. Right. Why not say, don't worry about the old man? Yeah, that's right. Put him off. Something must be done. Those who yield to these fleshly impulses, no matter how minuscule they may seem, or insignificant they may appear, because the old man sends out impulses or thoughts or intentions. They've not done, whoever yields to those, no matter how small they may seem, whoever yields to them have, has not done what this text says. Put off the old man. Now this kind of life where, you, where something started out pure and clean and yet you had, to, you had to deal with it anyway, you shouldn't confuse this because this is taught several places in Scripture. For instance, Hebrews 2.14 tells us that the, whole, that the devil has been destroyed. Jesus has destroyed the devil. But you still got to resist him. Huh? Yeah. There it is. Flesh has been circumcised. That's what the Scripture says. He circumcised the flesh. He cut it. And yet you've got to abstain from fleshly lusts. See? <laughs> the old man is crucified, as Romans 6 says, 6, 6 says, but yet you have to put him off. Yes, this is all while you remain in the body. This is while you remain in the body experience. This, after you leave the body, this, you don't have trouble with this at all. Given you notice if you ever um, read something about somebody who's in a perilous situation, if they think their life is 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 um, it's eminent that they're going to be killed, they can become very passionate about begging for their life. Yep. And this is what the flesh will do. Oh, it, it'll try to it'll try to convince you that this is unreasonable. You just need you just need to give me a little bit of space. Yeah. Just just allow me to live. There's nothing in the Bible against this. Yeah. Yeah. Now this has to do put off the old man and I'll develop this as fully as I'm. Capable. This has to do with conduct, with expression. This is not like an internal. That's not what he's talking about here. He talks about expression, where the where the old man expresses himself, which he'll always do when he's not on the cross. <clears throat> now, as long as we're in these vile bodies, we've got to contend with this. Only as long, but as long as you're in these bodies. No matter how long you've been in Christ, you got to contend with this. Put off. Bring into subjection the body. Bring it into subjection. Hmm? Now you got to work this out yourself. I've got my own battle. Sometimes my body says, I don't want to get up at 5 o'clock this morning. And I know there's things I have to do that require that I get up at 5 in the morning. That's it's that detail for me. That's that detail. You you can go through your own life. You'll find you've got some detail just that just that detailed. You've got some things you have to address. And you gotta work it out. You gotta put off the old man. You gotta determine who am I thinking about? So I got my health to think about. Oh, I was told this so many times. You're burning the candle at both ends, you couldn't. After several years, I finally convinced my mother that that was an improper assessment. She finally, she saw it. That you're always burning the candle at both ends, you know. 
And say, you're not, in other words, I'm like consumed. She saw it, she saw it finally, but she was thinking of her boy, you know. She didn't realize how capable people are. Sometimes people have undue concern for people because they underestimate what they're capable of. Now, these capabilities differ, I understand that. But you want to learn to operate at the optimum level, whatever that is. For some people, that's different than other people. But uh, you, each person has to deal with this. So as long as we're in the body, we've got to keep it under control, keep under it, bring it into subjection. <coughs> See, our initial obedience in Christ found us subjecting the body. We, we didn't think about convenience. We were thinking about obeying the Lord. We didn't think about convenience and this sort of thing. Now, I comments, he got a comment on the old man. He comments on it. Which is corrupt according to deceitful lusts. Corrupt means it's decaying. Uh, something that's corrupt is something that's dying. It, Something that's corrupt is something that can't last. It, it, it is rotting, yeah. rotting away, so to speak. Now this is a further description of the old man, which is distinct from the body, but expresses itself through the body. See that's, <laughs> But it's distinct from the body. It's not, it's not wed to the body. It's been circumcised. Yeah. It's been circumcised. You can use your body for God's glory because of that Amen. circumcision. <laughs> Other versions read grows corrupt, that is, it's in decreasing, or is being corrupted. So it's, it, the, the contaminated influences in the world, it keep, they keep on making this more corrupt, the old man more corrupt. Wax is corrupt, that is, it's, in, it's, de, it's getting larger in magnitude. It, Jerusalem, a new Jewish Bible says, is thoroughly rotted. Well, see, that technically is not right. It's, it's thoroughly rotten is what it is. It's not rotted, it's rotten. Yeah. It's corruptible. Otherwise, he says it's just corrupt, but he says it's corruptible. It means in a state of getting worse and worse, which is what the English Revised Version, which states it correctly, it gets worse and worse. You can't make the old man better in any sense. Amen. Amen. You can't shut it down partially. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. This, can, it, this like, can't be done. It can't be, it's corrupt. Uh -huh. yeah. You can't let it express a little of, its, of itself. It's thoroughly corrupt. Getting worse and worse. Now my mother was in a state of deterioration for five years with a debilitating stroke where she could only move her eyeballs. That was it. She got worse and worse for five years, long period. Your old man is the same thing. It takes a long time to die. I sometimes have marveled at people that have lingered on the precipice of death for years. You wonder why, why, how, why did God allow him to live so long? Teaching us something. Teaching us something. The process of death sometimes spans along. Put off the old man long. Put to death this old man is corrupt according to the heat for lust. It's getting worse, worse, worse. Sometimes this dying process. Jesus was dead in a little less than a day. He died quickly. But the reason he did is he, he gave up his life. Nobody, nobody took his life from him. He gave it up. So when he realized the work was finished, he just yielded up his spirit to God. That was the end of it. But see, the, the death of the old man is not, uh, not that easy. It takes a lot of putting off. Death is a process, see. Just like... Newness of life is a process. Just like salvation is a process upward, death is a process downward. The old man dying slowly. Now men must learn that the old man is in no sense getting better. Yeah. Better. You can't like educate him, make him tolerable by educating him a little bit. Or maybe you get him to sing a few things yeah. that are religious. Get a little better. 
Maybe he just go to maybe go to a certain kind of religious service. Maybe just get get a little better. But no, the old man is intrusive and defiling. He will not back off. The old man will not back off. About the time you think you're really strong and you really know a lot, the old man will flare up and you'll find out. You'll, <laughs> you'll find out that you're not as strong as you thought you were. You sometimes will do some of the dumbest things and say things you couldn't imagine you'd say. What happened? The old man, see? He got off the cross and he went to work right away. If you underestimate the part of you that does not require Christ, there's a part of your life that does not require Christ. If you underestimate the potency of that part of you, you have made a strategic blunder. That goes from appetite for food to the lowest basis desire. It has tremendous strength. More than you dare to imagine. Listen, people that have toppled off the deep end didn't do it overnight. The old man gradually asserted himself and finally he got to the point the person was helpless. What's the answer to this? Put off the old man, which is, which is corrupt. Everything about you that's natural is corrupt. Everything that came from Adam is corrupt. That is, it's in a state of deterioration. Is declining, but not in strength. That's right. Sometimes an animal is shot, and he's going to die, but he's as strongest when he's dying. That's right. Sometimes they'll, they'll become like super strength, come to these animals that are dying, and they'll do things you couldn't imagine they could do. That's the old man. If you let him loose, it's staggering what he's capable of doing. Put him off. He's corrupt according to, that means in accordance with, there's a certain kind of condition that exists that causes this to happen. It's intended to identify what is causing this steady deterioration. What's the cause of it? He identifies it as deceitful lusts, <laughs> lusts or desires, wants, deceitful lusts, desires that are delusionary. They really can't deliver what they, if I can just have one more shot of heroin, then I'll be, I'll be better. And one more drink, it'll, it'll settle me down. What one more cigarette and I'll be calm. Oh yeah, the flesh is deceitful. It can't deliver what it suggests. Yeah, yeah, See, it right. can't do what it says it can yeah, do. Huh? Deceitful lusts. <laughs> the the uh, contemporary English version refers to this as bad habits. Oh, that's a that's a. That's an improper representation. Sin is never depicted as a habit. The old man grows worse and worse through the means of desire. All right, so say you're, you're around people that are voicing things you need, things you ought to do, places you ought to go, and they're awakening these desires. And you say, you know, I got a little extra money. Maybe if I go to the lottery, maybe I'll win a lot of money and I can give a lot to the Lord. Yeah, it's a corrupt desire. That's right. yeah. God wants you to give to him what you've earned. It'd be like a thief saying, I robbed a bank, got a few hundred thousand, I'm going to give a portion to the Lord. It doesn't work that way. Deceit. So the old man grows worse and worse by what it desires, by the appetites it has. Yes? What about what you said? Sin is never depicted as a habit. Mom's told me this numerous times when I get in trouble. This, sin isn't 
it, it's a choice. You choose to. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. right. Amen. Amen. Think of desires as wants or expectations or preferences or longings or appetites or cravings or yearnings. See? <laughs> There's some people got in bad marriages because they just wanted to be married so bad. They didn't think the thing through. Some people dissolve marriages because they got to think in the wrong way. So it all starts with desires. This is one reason why we gather together, why we provoke one another to love and good work. This is one thing we, why we do this is to help and assist people to have lofty desires. Some people will hear this very thing and they'll say, well, that's too hard. I don't think I can do that. No, we're not talking about doing it. We're talking about wanting to do it. There's a difference in doing and wanting to do it. What we're trying to do is awaken in the people of God strong desires, strong longings, strong anticipations, strong yearnings, which will help to subdue the effect of the Old man. Amen. Even the best things that people yearn for, they can be modified quickly. Things like storms, famines, earthquakes, tornadoes, and personal illness can change a person's view of these preferences. It's like a fading, fading dream. Some people want to make a name for themselves. They want to be popular. They, they think that pleasure and security will follow. They want to be popular. Things like a famine, <laughs> a war, and a name doesn't mean anything. Uh -huh. See, it's a deceitful lust. Yeah. Can't deliver. And what are those that seek refuge in a casual religion? See, I don't want to leave God totally out of my life, but I, you know, I want to be like a part-time. Christian, I'd rather leave the serious things, leave it up to the kind of the leaders. They could have that. But see, that's a deceitful lust too. That's suggesting that God is too demanding. God isn't too demanding. Amen. Then on top of that, whatever he demands, he provides grace to do. So, Amen. deceitful lust. Here's something on which... Poor deluded souls don't reckon. The old man thrives on delusive desires. So if you have these desires that are deceitful, they're like food to the old man. Amen. That's right. Strengthens them. Because he works through deceitful lusts and desires. To express himself through your body. That's in particular what he's talking about. You you got a body, he's gonna do something if you're if you're normal. So this body can be a vehicle for the new man or a vehicle for the old man. Putting off the old man says you can't drive this vehicle. Now you take away the driver's license of the old man. Say, yep, you can't drive this body anymore. I'm going to live for Christ. I'm going to live for God. The new man I'm giving a license to him. Put off the old man. Uh, when the old man is not put off, death begins to pervade the entire person. Pretty soon this part of life becomes slipshod. That part of life, failure sets in. This is not working out. He, deceitful lust set the death process in motion. The things of God become less and less clear. More and more explanations are needed. And the world becomes larger and is over-assessed. But it's all a delusion. It's not the truth. Put off the old man which is corrupt according to deceitful lust, and you got, got to do this at the same time. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be. This is something you got to be. Again, the varying versions present us with several alternatives. That this is something that is happening. 
than words that you are being. Some picture it, picture it as an obligation. You must be. Some depict it as something that ought to be. Ye ought, this is what ought to be, should be. And some that this is what was originally intended, was to be. See, so all of these kind of neuter <laughs> the verse. They all get a person to look at it philosophically instead of addressing himself to the situation. Be, not get, be. Yeah. Renewed. Where some versions say made new. Now, as used here, let me give a technical definition of renewed. It doesn't mean like refurbished. Uh -huh. <laughs> Restored. That doesn't mean that. Uh -huh. The technical meaning of it is to be made new or different, to become new or different with the implication of becoming better. Yeah. So the, the new man is a different kind of man. He's not just, you don't just get a new set of clothes for the old man. Yeah, that's right. Dress him up really nice. And renewal is the man of the kingdom. Renewal. And it starts out with newness of life. <laughs> the inward man is renewed, the scripture says, day by day. So that's renewal. Renewed. Be renewed. That means every day, new. You're, you're on an upward trend. Renewed. Salvation consists of the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. So there it is. And that's part of salvation. Washing of regeneration, that happened at a point in time. Renewing of the Holy Spirit, ongoing. When we're going to be renewed. Now here's an intriguing expression. In the Spirit of your mind. The spirit. Mm -hmm. Isn't that kind of a intriguing expression? The spirit uh -huh. of your mind. The word spirit is the same word used by James. In James 2.26, the body without the spirit uh -huh. is dead. So the body has a spirit that animates it. And the mind has a spirit, smallest spirit, that animates it. Yes. <laughs> Be renewed in the thing that makes your mind work. Be renewed in the thing that drives what kind of thoughts you have. Be renewed in the spirit Amen. of your mind. <laughs> Elsewhere, Paul refers to this as the law of my mind. All right, that's the same. That's the same kind of thing he's talking about there. So what drives your thing? What compels you to think the way you do? That's what you you examine is yourself. I've, this has you find this has to be done regularly. Amen. Why am I thinking the way I'm thinking? Uh -huh. And what am I going to think about today? It's one thing to say I'm going to think about heaven today, but it's a, quite another thing to do it. Uh huh. See, it's good to have an intention. I'm going to think about the Lord, but you have to have the right spirit of the mind. You've got to have this spirit. Be renewed, not just be renewed in your mind, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. <coughs> this also might be referred to as the mind of the spirit. The spirit of the mind is the mind of the spirit or the mind of Christ. The spirit of the mind is in sync with Christ is in sync with Holy Spirit. Now this way of the old way of thinking, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. The old way of thinking is depicted by Paul in the 8th chapter of Romans. They that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. There it is. Be carnally minded as death. The carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither need can be. They that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. To be carnally minded is death. The carnal mind is enmity against God. Be. <laughs> That's the spirit of the mind. This is the carnal, the carnal, the, the carnal mind. Carnal is the, what the, is the spirit that drives the, uh -huh. 
thinking of the mind, fleshly things. And be a renewed mind has similar characteristics. They that are after the spirit mind the things of the spirit. To be spiritual mind is life and peace. This is the mind that's to be girded up. Get ready for your mind to work. You know that we live in a society, it's dominated by a craze for entertainment. And so the minds of people have become very slow. They have slow minds. And they don't have ready minds. Because the entertainment appeals not to the mind, but to the emotion, which is the weakest part of your person. It's the weakest, most vulnerable part of your person. That's why an emotional religion is a very weak religion. Yeah. Now, the genuine thing will make you emotional. We understand that, but the emotion is, is a, of a different order. We would call it fervent, fervency. Deceitful lusts. That's what we're comparing. See, be the renewing of the mind is compared with a mind dominated by deceitful lusts. So this is a mind that's set on things above, not on things on the earth. Amen. These are real things. The lusts of the earth are deceitful. They're not real. They're deceitful things. And these lusts they, of the earth, they war against the soul. But you don't know this unless you have the spirit of your mind has been renewed. When the spirit of your mind has been renewed, then you're way, whoa, these things are warring against my soul. Yeah, that's right. Amen. And things that you th may have interpreted as frustration. Now you know, oh, this is more than just frustration. This is something warring against my soul, yeah. see. Uh Paul says he had such determination, Paul, he was renewed in the spirit of his mind, that when he was threatened with death, here's what he said, none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy in the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. He had a new spirit of mind. See, the truth of the matter is, we may die tonight. Now you ask yourself, am I ready? It'd help you get renewed in the spirit of your mind. Because that's why Paul said, I don't count my life dear to me. I'm not going to plan my life around safety. Even though he took precautionary measures because he knew his work wasn't finished yet. But they were godly precautionary measures, not ungodly ones. The renewed mind has a tendency and propensity referred to as the law of my mind. It's the opposite of gravity. It's a pull upward instead of a gravity downward. The flesh has gravity. But the spirit has this, the opposite. It pulls toward heaven. <laughs> Renewed mind is a tendency or propensity. With my mind, I myself serve the law of God. See? See? That's a renewed mind. This renewed mind has separates me from the course of the world. It, it, but it has to be done regularly because the you, old man's living in your house. Mm -hmm. That's right. The, the old man's living in your house. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. If you say, well, you've got to just stay in the back room. Eh? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, that, that won't do. That's right. He'll shout you he'll down from the back room. He'll do it. You got to keep him on the cross. You got to crucify, mortify it, or in the words of our text, put off the old man. It's, it's talking about the same thing, but the put off has to do with the expressions that are produced through your body. Stop doing it. That's what this text is talking about. You can't stop the old man from desiring. You you, you can't stop fiery darts from being hurled at you. You can quench them, but you can't stop them from being hurled. Amen. See, when you know that, mm -hmm. you put off the old man, you will refuse to let him express himself. Yeah. That's the point that he's making. Yeah. You can't discard the old man. Yeah, that's right. Be nice if you could. Uh -huh. Just throw him away. 
But he's talking about conduct. You can see that, can't you? He's talking about expression. He's not and and refusing to have expression given to the old man is found in thinking properly. Yes, Amen. yes Sister Barbara. For a long time, I did not connect this. What you're speaking about with Second Corinthians ten. Speaking about the weapons of our yeah. warfare, yeah. that are mighty, that's what this is referring that's to. Right. The weapons mm -hmm. we've yes. been given by the Lord are to throw down these thoughts and that's these right. desires mm -hmm. that are connected mm -hmm. to the old man. Because it says, taking into captivity every thought to the that's obedience right. yes. of Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. So these yes. thoughts arise, we take take hold of them, we, we test them. That's what right. spirit is this from? What is it connected to? That's if right, amen. not obedient to Christ, we have the power to cast it down. Amen. He that is not cast down, It'll out. It'll come out your mouth or come through some other way. We've talked about this before now. If uh, the old man manages to tear loose and get down off the cross, <laughs> yeah. uh, didn't we discuss uh, we had to be delivered again from that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. You uh, he can shout down from the cross all he wants to. That's right. But now if he gets loose, that's right. Because God was the one that crucified him, yeah. put him on the cross to begin with. Uh -huh. You have to confess your sin. He's That's faithful right. and just to forgive us our sin. And, 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 and then you're restored. But God has to do that. Amen. Yes. You're talking about conduct, which is the outward evidence of what exists inwardly. That's right. What, what really controls you. Mm -hmm. But it talks about that the, the mind of the flesh being enmity. Yeah. Now, what is that enmity? It's the mind of the flesh, no matter what it says, denies God. Yeah. It denies Him. God is yeah. who you serve. You can say what you want, but who you serve is your God. That's right. Amen. And so, this, the, the old nature is living robbing God of His glory and denying Him as God because mm -hmm. it serves itself. Yes. Itself is its own God. So that's when the, mm -hmm. the expression is it, it has a, a multitude of, of ways that it expresses itself mm -hmm. but the seed of it is always that it will not bow the knee. That's right. It will mm -hmm. not. That's right. God yeah. is not God to the flesh. Amen. There's coming yeah. a day when God will, it'll, it will, because God mm -hmm. is. But, but as long as the flesh has the ability to express itself, mm -hmm. as long as it can exert its own will or mm -hmm. way, it, it, it will not have God on the throne. It will Amen. not. Amen. 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 <laughs> now some of the some some historical Christians have seen this and they have chosen what they call a simple life like the Quaker people and the Amish people and so forth and while this can't be imposed on anyone I think I can see their the reasoning that they have because the more involvements you have, the more liabilities you have. You, you're the one who has to draw the line. I mean, if you're going to do an extensive work for God, you probably be required to have a variety of social involvements. I mean, this this probably happens, but you have to you have to manage these involvements. You can't let them manage you. So the more divided your life is, if you're doing a whole bunch of things, you've got a whole bunch of liabilities. Now this, this don't need for this to overcome you. If you know this, if you know this and you know how to react to it, you can manage the situation and keep under your body. But if you don't know this, these will gradually rob you because they require your mind, they require your eyes, they require your ears, they require your hands. They, they require some kind of ex mm -hmm. That's right. expression. So the old man's not an imagination. Oh no, very real. Yeah, now the, the psychology tries to teach you that this is just this is just an imagination. Yeah. It's just you you have a you have a bad conscience, and so they try to work it out to yeah. where it belongs to somebody else and not you. That's right. Mm -hmm. 
The yes. old man doesn't always holler from the cross, does no. he? Right. can talk real yeah. subtle. Yeah. Right. He can pretense. Yeah, that's right. He can slide in oh, and he yeah. can disguise himself. Yeah. That's just why you have to examine your heart to mm -hmm. see if, if everything is pure and, and like it should be because mm -hmm. the old man yeah. says he's really crafty. Sometimes he comes like a give you a night. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The Gibeonites oh, came, they put on old clothes, had stale bread. Sometimes the old man comes like a Gibeonite right. to you. Uh -huh. Get you to feel a little sorry for him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, we'll do that. Here's a part of your life, you you got a right. Yeah. Uh -huh. You're a creation of God, you're in his world, you got a right. David prayed. <laughs> I would, would look after him in this regard. That's Help right. Us. Find something that slight slipped in there. That yeah, that's right. Oh, See man. if there be. Yeah. I like this, what you brought up. You said to the degree that you set your mind on heavenly things, you'll be able to identify yeah. these that's right. as what they really are. That's right. Because mm -hmm. by contrast. That's right. That's it. Amen. Yeah. See, a lot of your learning in Christ, a lot of your learning is by contrast. Right. Yeah. 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 Anyone else tonight? Text in Romans 6 when he says, Know ye not that to yeah. whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey? Yeah. His servants ye are to yeah, whom ye obey. So nobody's a free agent. Everybody is submitting to somebody. That's right. And uh, the old That's man just right. happens to be the wicked one's servant. That's right. And the new man happens to be the Lord's servant. Amen. Amen. See, God made man servile. Yes, that's right. That's how he created it. You, a person should be able to think it out. You've got to have food. You've got to have water. You, mm -hmm. You've been created. You're driven by need and by appetite, and you're made to serve. Yes. Yeah, that's why you've been made. Mm -hmm. because, it, because God's intention is for himself to be served. So yeah. he's, he made a creature that can be brought to that point. <laughs> All right, we'll have a word of prayer. <laughs> Our dear Heavenly Father, we're grateful for these expressions of Scripture. We're thankful for these admonitions, like put off the old man, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. We confess these are challenging, but they're very attractive to us. We ask for grace to actually do this. We want to be pleasing to you in these regards. In Jesus' name, amen.